Today we're going to be talking about the loan estimate. This is a three-page form that is required to be given to you within three days of applying for your loan and being under contract to buy a property. This form is used for purchases, refinances, and for many years now it has been used to replace the good faith estimate. It's a great document. It's not perfect but we're going to go through it line by line today to make sure you understand it and you know how to read it because you will see revisions of this document coming to you as you go through the underwriting process. My name is Miles Pitcher. I'm the owner of Superior Lending. I've been in the business 21 years. All right, let's do a walkthrough on this loan estimate. This is what the form looks like. Obviously, you may have a different lender name up at the top, but let me walk you through line by line so you understand the costs. And also, I'll point out a few things for you to double check and make sure that they have correct. For example, we'll go over here, make sure that they have your name spelled right. Make sure the property address is correct and the sales price is accurate right there. Loan term, make sure that's what is expected. 30 year purchase, by the way, same form is used for refinances. We'll go through a purchase. This is actually a loan estimate for one of my clients that we closed back in August. Very important right here, make sure you got your fixed and your loan type is right here. Uh, you may have another app option added on here if you do a USDA loan. Loan ID, that's just internal to your lender. This is one of the major things I want you to watch for. Your rate locked in. I had a, I've had both sides of this with clients. I had a client a couple weeks ago call up, very upset with their other lender that they were using. They, had a, they were building a new home. They had assumed that the lender, and he, they even felt the lender told them that they were locked in on their rates, come to find out that they weren't, and rates have risen up big time, and so it is costing them big time and money. Other side of the coin is that you want to make sure that, yeah, you're locked in, or that you know when your rate lock expiration happens. I've had clients who had their rates locked, they did not close right on time and the lock was lost and rates had risen up. So that could put you in a, a real big pickle. Just right here, this will tell you if you're locked or not and when it expires. All right, we've talked about loan amount already. Check this out right here. Can this increase after closing? So you'll see the items here that tell you if they can increase. There's your interest rate. And if you're doing an adjustable rate mortgage, that would say yes. Here's your principal and interest. And then these are two that I get questions on, primarily this one, prepayment penalty, meaning if you pay the loan off early, is there any type of penalty? No, there's not. Typically mine do not have penalties. Haven't seen a balloon payment in years, but this is just a, even though your loan may be amortized over 30 years, they could call it due or have a balloon payment in five years. So that would say yes, if there was an early payment, early payoff date. Now here's our payment section. We've talked about principal and interest from up above. It matches. And then you can see that that doesn't change. We got two time periods here, time periods here, year one through six and then seven through 30. Why is that? Because the PMI or mortgage insurance is on there for the first six years and then it drops off. And then you can see how the monthly payment, the estimated payment drops down because that PMI disappears. Escrow, I'll show you the breakdown that right down below here. So this is an estimate of what your taxes, insurance, and HOA are going to be 320 a month. And you'll notice up here it said 175, but here it says 320. Why is that? Well, because this estimate includes property taxes. Yes, it is in the escrow account. Homeowners insurance or fire insurance? Yes, it is. HOA, yes, you do have to pay it, but is it in the mortgage payment? No, it is not, okay? So that's why this is 320 and that's 175. All right, so bottom of page one or two, the most important numbers that you guys need to pay attention to. A total of your closing costs right here, and we'll go through the total and breakdown on page two and then your cash to close. That will also come off of page two. But really, the this front page has the key important information on it. 
What is your monthly payment? Is that in line with what you were expecting? What is your cash to close? Is that in line with what you were expecting? So now we'll go to page two and start going through the line by line breakdown. Okay. Box A, this is really the box that your loan officer can control because right now in this one it says originator compensation, that actually was an underwriting fee. There are some other fees that you could see in here. Number one being points paid to the loan officer, right? Or origination fee. You could see a discount fee or discount points. And those are essentially buying down the interest rate. I'll link a video where you can see if it makes sense to buy down your rate. You would also see an underwriting fee. You could see an admin fee in here. Those are some of the things that you could see in, in this box. You could see a setup fee possibly. But those are all things that are part of a, in the control of the loan officer on what's being charged. In this, by the way, this form's a little funny in that it totals at the top. So everything listed below totals right there at the top. But appraisal fees, those keep going up. Closing coordination fee, credit report, MERS fee. So that's mortgage electronic registration system that helps track the mortgage when it moves from servicer to servicer. Flood cert, verifying you're not in a flood zone or if you are. HOA transfer or certification tax service. We use a third party processor, that's what that fee is. And then verification of employment. We list this fee on our loan estimates, the, the verification, because it may be needed, it may not. But for us, we list it as right up front and it's real easy to remove it if we don't need it. All right, here's all your title fees. And I apologize that I don't know why when this was printed, letters are missing, but title fees are super important. I'll link a video here that goes through why title insurance, okay? And why you need that, what the difference is between the lender's policy and the owner's title policy, okay? and one protects the lender the other one protects you as an owner but over here in section c these are all the title company fees so those will be determined by the title company that's chosen fees typically are very similar company to company because they are state mandated and so really it comes down just to who's going to give you really great service as a title company so those all total up so this whole left hand column right here totals up to 49.78. Now we're gonna hop right column. Here's your fee for recording with the county, your ownership in the property and recording the mortgage. Now homeowner's insurance is right here. By the way, prepaids is also another name for escrows, my prepaid account. So we're, since this guy was buying a team, homeowner's insurance premium is small, $300 a year. Prepaid interest. So what this is, is that we have to cover the interest from the for the remainder of the month so we're estimating this is going to cover eight days and at 44.63 a day this is how much we're putting in okay fund this escrow account or prepaid account so that as you contribute to it with your monthly mortgage payment it builds up and so it's ready to pay your property taxes for you your homeowner's insurance for you when those come due again so you can see that we're going to be doing our homeowner's insurance for three months. That goes in there, 150 month. And I can tell you that was an estimate on the property tax, 13 months, that goes in. Couple things to note, we later found out what the actual property tax amount was. We reissued the loan estimate to our client with the exact amount on it. And that number would have changed when this loan estimate was reissued. Also, most likely, and it doesn't show right here, there would be a credit coming from the seller covering the property taxes from January up through the day that we close because the seller lived in the property. But so here we have our, our buyer getting charged with the full period of property taxes, but what's not reflected, but it will be on the closing disclosure is the credit from the seller for property taxes. Section H, the other fees, so your realtor may have a transaction coordinator. That fee is there for them. It's super worthwhile. They, they keep everybody 
hitting the dates, making sure we close on time, making sure we get appraisals on time. So very worthwhile if they have a transaction coordinator fee. Owner's title policy. I know that says optional. So typically my clients have this paid by the sellers. That's 99% of the time that happens. So even though this shows as a fee here, it's going to be paid by the seller, most likely. This is a super important fee. I would not go without it. Again, I'll have this video here for you that walks you through why title insurance and do you need it? But the short answer is yes, you do. Okay, so everything in the right-hand column totals up there. So now we're taking the D plus the I, that gives us a total right there. Side note, if your lender is giving you some kind of a credit, it would show up right there under lender credit. Okay, page one, you can see our cash closed 9906. That totals up those two numbers and then zero in lender credit. Okay, so you can see how page one summarizes the total, summarizes the breakdown of page two. Close. So closing costs, down payment required from our borrower. They've already put $5,000 down in earnest money. And then we have a seller credit right here, $5,000. And then that gives us our estimated cash to close. That number is going to go down because for two reasons. Number one, even though we have that 1900 in there showing as a charge, our seller is going to pay that and we'd show that to the client. Number two, we're collecting 1900 for property taxes for 13 months. We're going to get a credit on the closing disclosure from the seller. That's going to help bring down the cash to close. So we always walk our clients through this loan estimate and help them understand where additional credits may be coming in to help them out. Page three. All right. Again, loan officer info here. All that will be listed up there at the top. This gives you an idea of principal and interest paid over the first five years, how much you'll have paid off. APR, annual percentage rate. So again, this is not your interest rate. Okay. This, what it does is it takes your base rate, takes the cost of the loan, which then is converted into a percentage. So now you have your rate plus closing costs in a number that you can compare against other quotes that you're receiving. It's a shopping tool. So the closer the, the APR is to your note rate, the better deal you're getting from your loan officer. Or the, lo the lower it is, the better the deal is. If your APR is way high, then there's probably a lot of fees that you're paying. We call this the tip total interest percentage. So it's the total amount of interest you're going to pay over the full life of the loan as a percentage of your loan amount. Okay. Obviously, if you pay early, pay extra, that will not be accurate. Saying there may be an, an appraisal ordered and you're going to be charged for it. You will get a copy of the appraisal, even if your loan doesn't close, and then you can pay for an additional appraisal for your own use at your own cost if you want. Just note that in the mortgage industry right now, do not assume that you can order your own appraisal and pick your appraiser. We have laws that require that the appraiser be picked out of a pool of appraisers so that there is no undue influence. In fact, as a loan officer, we don't even know who the appraiser is until after the report comes back so that we can't influence loan assumption. This is a cool thing. This will tell you that the loan cannot be assumed. Now, if you have an FHA or VA loan, the loan could be assumed and they'll put a video here link for a video that I've done on loan assumptions. You have to have homeowner's insurance, but you get to pick it. And what happens on late payments? It's 15 days, 5% of the principal and interest amount. Refinancing, no guarantees that they will refinance your loan. You can refinance, but you do have to qualify for it. And then servicing, this is just a notification to you and most likely that your loan will be transferred to someone else servicing the loan. Hope that makes sense. All right. So that, and then you have to sign it, acknowledging it. And again, if I didn't tell you this, this loan estimate has to be delivered to you within three days of your loan application 
And when I say loan application, that means you have like a property under contract that you're going to, going to buy with a specific address. Uh, you've given your social security number to the lender. They've pulled credit on you. They have your income information. They have your debts. They have all the key pieces of information. And if that's the case, then this document has to be delivered to you. It's a requirement. So you're totally within your rights to ask your loan officer for a loan estimate. Good faith estimates aren't used anymore. So it's a loan estimate. I hope this has been helpful in understanding how to read this important document. If you have any questions, please, please feel free to reach out. We're happy to help you if you have questions on your loan estimates. We're always here to help you. Have a great week.